Hello, my name is Chelsea Whittington and it is my honor once again to celebrate Mental Health Awareness Month along with Edgewater Health. May is Mental Health Awareness and we have developed a series talking to the professionals here at Edgewater about mental health and what it means as their role here in this illustrious organization. We want to first say Thanks to our CEO, Dr. Danita Johnson, for having the foresight to develop this segment so that our community can learn more about the services offered at Edgewater Health and information about mental health in general. Today, I am joined by someone whom I admire, adore, and absolutely love. Dr. Deborah McCullough, you are here today with me. I had to twist your arm a little bit, but nonetheless, you are here and we are so excited. It has been a little over a year since you joined the team mm -hmm. in the Cedar Lake office for Edgewater, but mm -hmm. I'm going to go way back and ask you to just start by telling us a little bit about your illustrious medical career. Now, all I can say is, number one, I'm from Gary, Gary, Indiana. Yes. And uh, I attended Howard University. Same. <laughs> <laughs> After Howard, I did go to Indiana University. Uh, did our four years there, and I was the first Afro American female to finish in medicine at Indiana. And you can look that up. You are in the history books. Yeah. History. And then I went to Cook County Hospital, where I stayed for four years. And then I came into private practice here in Gary, Indiana. Now, Doc, mm -hmm. I have to stop you there because every time, to me, like Cook County is a buzzword because we know that that is a challenging, like high, fast-paced trauma area. And I figure you get your legs there, and if you can work there, you hey, can work anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> what was that like? I loved Cook County Hospital. Okay. It, it like you said, it was fast-paced. Uh, it made you think on your toes. Uh, it made you improvise. Because it is a county hospital, mm -hmm. you did not have everything that some of the other hospitals had. So we had to learn to improvise. improvise. I like it. And we did. And uh, our rates were very good. Okay. You know? uh, not just in obstetrics, but in gynecology and surgery. So, and I loved being there, that high pace, yes. that's what it is. You so know? then private practice, what led you to that? And then tell me about that practice because I know people always come to you in the community and say, oh, you delivered me or you delivered right. my daughter. Well, being a specialist in obstetrics and gynecology, most people know me as an obstetrician. So I did, I have done thousands of deliveries. Wow. You know, especially when you come from Cook County Hospital, mm -hmm. you have done at least four or five thousand right then. Oh, wow. And then to come uh, here and work in Gary, where I have been for 44 years. My goodness. Uh, it has been interesting on all levels. You start very new. Everybody says, oh, I don't know about going to a female, that was my first problem. Mm -hmm. You know, getting people acclimated to the idea of coming to a female. And because they've been inundated with males sure. all their lives. So then they said, oh, well, maybe she might know something. A little something. A little something, something, you yes. know. So that's when the community started uh, accepting mm -hmm. me as well as other, you know, female physicians, especially in obstetrics and gynecology. Yes. And, and you would think that would be a natural fit, a woman helping a woman. We have the same organs and parts and feelings. I know, but some women but yeah. just did not trust, trust that yeah. feeling. You know, he knows more, yeah. you know. But after coming from Cook County, I must say, <laughs> you know everything. You know everything. You know everything. So I'll fast forward a little bit because I know that this is Mental Health Awareness Month, and as I have been interviewing the different professionals here at Edgewater, it's so amazing how it's like a puzzle that fits together that no matter what area of medicine that you're practicing, mental health has some role in that for a pregnant mom, uh, especially maybe a first time mom. What do you go through mentally? like? I'm, I have another human growing inside of me and, and I'm going to have to be responsible for someone else and that in itself could impact your mental, but 
just talking about that and then your role with overall women's health here at Edgewater. Well, that is true. Mental health is, how can I say, in women is a more hormonal. Mm. And as a result, it depends on what level are we in our hormonal level. Okay. During pregnancy, you know, we're elevated, then we go down. We're elevated, then we go down. Okay. Uh, and then the hormones from the baby produce you to have other ideas and other feelings and scenarios. And some women do well and some women need medication mm -hmm. to help them get through. And uh, that is one of the big problems during pregnancy, the hormonal imbalance and mental health. So now we go to the gynae sector mm -hmm. where, again, we're talking about hormones. Mm -hmm. uh, what hormones are elevating and which ones are leaving the older we become. Mm -hmm. There are certain hormones that leave us and we might have to replace them. And then it depends also on who you're going to, male or female. Whereas if you're going to another female, she understands this and has experienced it maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, and some people just poo poo it. Mm -hmm. You know, and say, oh, that's all in oh, your head. That's all in your head. Oh, wow. You know, or just take this medicine and be through with it. That a lot of times there are a lot of scenarios behind women's mental health. It can be sociolog sociological, it can be uh, due to abuse, it can be due to drugs. It, you know, there's so many behind the scenes that women have these issues. Even though Men are have some of the same problems. We have found that women are 40% more likely to have depression, whereas men may be less than 30%. Okay. As a result of this, women are treated be better well, because they recognize it and they're more apt to come for treatment. Yes. And, and men, no, men will succumb and say I'm strong, I'm strong. I just I can overcome this exactly thing. okay but that's one scenario and then women are more likely to attempt suicide whereas men will attempt but succeed you, you know, are statistics. really quoting some stats you know, here that I was not aware of. That is true. That is true. So joining the Edgewater team, which mm -hmm. I was so excited mm -hmm. to see, can you talk more about your role? And um, then we'll talk about what cases you may have seen that while you're treating the whole body, that mental health once again creeps in to be helped as well. Okay. My role is women's health, and it also, as I said, works with mental health, okay. you know, and I'm in Cedar Lake, and I've had uh, several incidences of women coming out there seeking assistance. How should I treat this, or should I do this? And it has been quite an experience. Uh, you have to decide mentally, and if it's something that's medically necessary, or is it something that you emotionally, and Edgewater, by working with Edgewater, that has been a fantastic experience. And because congratulations, it, because you all just celebrated a year. I couldn't yes, believe it. It came yes, up in the memories yes. on the Edgewater Facebook page, yes. where you all were cutting the ribbon, and now you've had a whole year of changing lives, and again, inserting yourself in the medical community. I feel like having such a, a rich history and legacy in medicine, mm -hmm. that to me, coming into the Cedar Lake office would make me sigh a sigh of relief. I'm like, Dr. McCullough is here. That's somebody I know she knows what she's doing because she's been doing it a while. Well, you know, you have to spread the word and mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to do. I've gone to the different agencies and the different uh, uh, stores and everything around in that area just to get them inundated to Edgewater yes. and what we have to offer. Yes. You know, we have the psychiatrist and, you know, you have the well, the family practice, you have the ob -Gyne. So the, the community is growing, okay. you know, and Edgewater's name is really getting out there, the buzzword, yes. and yes. that's what we want. And I'm happy you know? to be on that journey with you in that we know that the history of Edgewater, which is coming up on 50 years, by the way, 
is such of the more of the mental health aspect, but now has progressed to treating the whole body and having professionals like yourself on the team. And so we need people to know. So obviously there must have been a need in the Cedar Lake community for uh, treatment, oh. you know, as we fan out and extend our services in Northwest Indiana. It's not just services, our services, they were in need of physicians so, oh. you know, in that particular area mm -hmm. uh, because I think they have three physicians okay. in the Cedar Lake area. So by Edgewater coming out there, that has just broadened our experience and their experience and their acceptance of the Edgewater system. And uh, well, Very bravo, nice. Dr. Johnson and team. I love it. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, address the elephant in the room real quickly as far as the stigmas around getting help for mental health. We often say in the African-American community that therapy and speaking to someone when you're not okay is not the thing to do or mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to know about it. How do you think we should tackle that or how are we doing that at Edgewater to say, this is something that is encouraged and is quite frankly healthy. Well, that is true. That's just what you said. We're encouraging, getting the word, and you're one of those people getting the word out there so that they can come in and be serviced at Edgewater. Edgewater has been a, a, a beacon of uh, service. I have to say, my mother started here Really? Yes. Oh, so buried the lead. I think she was one of the persons who got Edgewater started. Okay. So it's been in my blood, and so we know all about it. We know what services we can do. We know that the people that we can reach, and we know that there's a need. Yeah. You know, if it was 50 years ago, you know, there was a need. There's more of one now because Absolutely. those services have been cut, you know, by the state. and. Uh, Edgewater is bringing that forward. Now, while you're in Cedar Lake, I want to make it clear, though, that anyone can come throughout the community, right? Yes, anyone can come to the Cedar Lake uh, establishment okay. right there. Uh, I don't know the address right now. Oh, no, they're going to go to the website, <laughs> edgewaterhealth.org. All the information is there. We also encourage them to follow us on Facebook. As we get ready to close out, if there is someone Who's watching I always say they are on the fence and it may be something that you say that will encourage them to go ahead and not only seek the help from a mental aspect but also from the whole body aspect what would you tell them to say you know what it's time for you to get yourself checked out it's time for you to see what's going on and what these symptoms might mean get them in here doc what would you say well first of all since we do have Edgewater out there in Cedar Lake right now, the need, like I said, has been there. You are promoting it. Once you promote Edgewater, and what I have seen, more and more women are coming seeking assistance. Yes. You know, they have, everybody has little issues. Mm -hmm. So we want them to know, continue. Don't put it off. Mm -hmm. You know, the moment you start feeling different, or someone notices something about you that's different, come and seek help. You know, don't let that old saying, oh no, you can't do this, you don't feel like this. There was just a recent uh, television program where certain, um, how should I say, certain um, peoples have more of a stigma than we do. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, like I said, they tend to commit suicide, and we don't want this. No. So therefore, let's get you into Edgewater Health as soon as we can. Don't let it deter you. You can always be seen. You can always be treated. Please come. Please, Please come. come. That's a word from Dr. Deborah McCullough. Women's Health for Edge Water Health. I want to thank you so much for having this conversation. See, it wasn't so bad. And when I look into your <laughs> eyes, it's, it's the sense of comfort. And that's what Edge Water offers as far as making you feel comfortable about your situation and just giving mm -hmm. that overall feeling that you're going to get the help that yes. you need. So if you're interested in getting services from Edge Water, you need only head over to the website, Edgewater Health. 
www.ghanaspiritsfamilyfoundation.org. And again, I want to thank Dr. Danita Johnson for her leadership. We are on the cusp of 50 years. And let me tell you, the conversation about the whole body and wellness will continue. Dr. McCullough, thank you and thank everybody for watching. We'll see you next time.